Idea City. Ideas change the world. We're now going to hear from someone who actually lives the life. His name's Michael Ray, and uh, what the bio doesn't, in fact, emphasize is that in addition to being a uh, prolific writer and research assistant to Aubrey de Grey, who we're going to hear from next, uh, Michael Ray practices systematic disciplined calorie restriction. And uh, so he weighs in at 115 pounds despite being six feet tall. Now, calorie restriction of between 30 and 45 percent has been shown to extend the lives of rats, mice, fish, flies, and yeast, and work on primates looks very promising. What you get is lower blood pressure, lower levels of insulin, less glucose and fat. The Calorie Restriction Society claims to have 1,000 paid members, two dozen of whom live here in Canada. Michael? The mechanisms of aging are mutually synergistic, so there are a series of independent biomolecular changes going on in your system all the time. And when one system starts to go, it adds to another, it adds to another, it adds to another, and you get this exponential curve, which you're going to see this curve reflected downwards. That's human lifespan through the ages. What we've done over history is we've gotten better and better at avoiding being killed by saber-toothed tigers, providing a reliable food source, getting rid of cholera, getting rid of polio, so forth and so on. We've avoided killing people early. And that has simply unmasked the accelerating process, that downwards exponential curve of biological aging. This is another way of representing what's been going on. Um, this is where, historically, people have died, right? Lots of child and infant mortality, lots of women dying in the process of giving birth to those stillborn children. Suddenly in 1900, we get really good at hygiene. And from thereafter, we start to climb, but not by as much as you think, because it's almost all, almost everyone that we increase that average lifespan by is from this death here. So we went from 48.5, 71, 76. It hasn't been since 1950 that we've really made much change at the far end. And if we keep going, without addressing the underlying biological aging, we're just going to square that curve further and further because that exponential process is immune to anything you're going to do about a disease, right? Now, in a moment, my mentor, Dr. DeGray, is going to talk to you about a cure, a real cure, that is going to wipe this out better than we wiped out polio. But the question is, which of you folks are going to make it? When the cure comes, and with enough investment, it will, if you are age 50, about a third of you are not going to make it. You will get what is, by today's standards, a dramatic extension of your lifespan, and almost all of that healthy. A lot of you are going to make it as far as 150 years and still cough out, and that ain't bad. But you know what? We don't have the cure today. If you're 50 today, that's not the curve you're on. If it's 10 years from now, over half of you are not going to make it, and a lot fewer of you are going to make it to 150. And I got to tell you, Dr. DeGray is a lot more optimistic than I am about time scales, even if we had the funding, even if we were working a lot harder than we are. And he doesn't say 10 years, he says 25. Young, healthy years are extended. The old decrepitude stays roughly the same. Uh, so you're going to spend the same amount of time in the nursing home as you do now. You're just going to spend a lot more time on the golf course and in the tennis courts in the meantime. Uh, and you'll notice there, the more extreme you make it, the more profound the response is. That was first discovered in the 30s. It was basically ignored for a long time because it only seemed to work in very young animals. They tweaked the protocol. We'll get into that in a moment. Once you do it properly, it works in young adults. And now, just a few years ago, it works in, these are the mouse equivalent of about 54 years when they get started. And you see that curve? 
moving off to the right. Uh, don't be confused by this thing right here. This is a flat line in more senses than one. All the mice here in the ad lib group are dead by 40 some odd months. Uh, these guys, the last one dies off in almost 50 months. It is a simple mathematical relationship. Calories, calories, calories. Another way to put this is every calorie you put in your system is toxic. The fewer calories you consume, the longer your lifespan is extended until you get to the very, 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 very edge of starvation when you're not dying of aging, you're dying of not having enough food to carry on the basic cellular functions of life. You feel so good. People will tell you you will feel lousy on CR. It is such nonsense. You feel so fantastic. I wish I had more time to get into it. This baby here, brain-derived neurotrophic factor, is a big part of the reason for it. It keeps your brain cells alive, but it's also activated by every antidepressant, despite the fact that they all have different mechanisms of aging. Do go to the blog of April Smith in the back. She will tell you how to make delicious, magnificent food, along with giving you much entertainment along the way. Do figure out where you can eat healthily and more or less stick on the program. Do learn how to weigh, measure, and use software. You can do that at calorierestriction.org. Do get off the stage when the machine tells you you've got to go. <laughs> I'm very sorry about that. I'm sorry, Moses. We, we... Get the latest Idealist news, presenter information, and watch streaming video at www.ideacityonline.com.